Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. What are we talking about today? Parrots. Should you use them? How do you use them? What's the point of using them? And what's the deal with smearing? Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. We talk about all things distilling, recipes, how-tos, guides, little experiments, taste tests and those sort of things. Today though, we're talking about parrots. So here's the thing guys, uh, there is definitely a little controversy about uh, the effectiveness or whether or not you should use these things kicking around. Uh, I've always wanted to do a little experiment based on this and I haven't had the chance because I never actually built one. Turns out I still haven't built one. <laughs> this actually got mailed in from the Lazy Plumber. Uh, thank you so much dude, it's really cool. You may notice guys that there are a bunch of uh, really nice soldering joints on this. There's one kind of crappy one and that's because Supposed to be pulled it apart and I put it back together. In any case guys, I want to get into whether you should use these, uh, what they do for you and what the potential downsides are to them as well. Just in case you're not sure what a distiller's parrot is or a parrot's beak, uh, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how the thing works. So first of all, your uh, alchometer goes in the inside little tube right here. This spout goes under your offtake on your still, so your distillate is coming out into here. And then under this end, you pop a cuts or a collection jar over there like so. If you were actually running it, you wouldn't want that much gap. But anyway, now let's pretend that this is the fluid coming off, the alcohol coming off the still, uh, which drops into the parrot and eventually will end up floating your hydrometer over this side and spilling over into your jar over here. Why would you use one? Well, basically it's gonna give you kind of a running total uh, or a constant update on what the ABV is coming off your still. As you can see, here comes the hydrometer. The fluid's gonna overflow the inside down into the, down into the jar over here. That's going to be a problem in a minute or two, so let me fix that now. All right, so why would you want to know the ABV as a running, sort of a running updated number during your run as you're distilling? Well, some people use it to make cuts. Personally, that's not what I do, but if that is your thing, then, then that's okay. That's a discussion for a different day. Uh, some people just like the information, they, it helps them decide or know what's going on in the still and maybe how to adapt and change what to do differently. And for some people, honestly, it's just fun. It's nice to know what's happening. So in essence, your still is going to keep running into here and you're just going to collect over here in the jars. As the ABV changes coming down into the parrot, then the ABV reading will change on the hydrometer here as well. So that's awesome, right? Like, why would you not use this thing then? Well, the main critique of the Parrot is that it is going to smear your product. Essentially what that means is you're going to kind of uh, muddy your fractions a little more than you would have otherwise. It would be like lining up all of your cuts jars and taking, you know, a certain amount out of each jar and putting it into the next one, mixing it up, taking a little bit out, putting it into the next one, mixing it up. Do you know what I mean? So it's gonna sort of bleed over into each extra jar. Why do people say that that might happen? Well, because it's a fluid going in here and fluids tend to sort of mix with each other and not move linearly. Imagine if you were sort of smushing Play-Doh in here um, and it was coming out the other end. If you suddenly changed colors of Play-Doh, you would expect it to come through in a pretty hard and fast sort of change in color. But because when you drip the fluid in here, it mixes and it may sort of, some of it may float up, some of it may sink quicker. It all gets mixed up. And then by the time it's over here and coming out, it, it's, it's getting crazy. And honestly, that is the reason that I haven't run out and got a parrot yet, simply because I wasn't really sure how much of a issue that was. Today, I want to try a little experiment to see if I can kind of answer my own question. And I assure you guys, I actually haven't done this yet, so you're going to be finding out the results of this the same time I do. Here's the plan team. Basically what I'm gonna do is fill the parrot up with food coloring uh, and then slowly drip water into this end and pretend like I'm collecting on that end with cut jars, 
and I'm going to basically see how long it takes uh, for the color of the fluid coming out of the parrots to change and sort of what rate it changes at. Before I get stuck in, a little tip for parrots because I've heard a lot of people say that they have broken their alcometers by dropping them in. Someone gave me the awesome tip and I totally can't remember who it was. I apologize for that. For taking a little bit of copper wool, putting it in there, and it cushions the fall of the hydrometer. How genius is that? <laughs> now, I already know, I measured beforehand, that when the parrot is empty, it takes 260 mils of fluid to fill it, and with the hydrometer in there, it's around about 245. So, here we go. How cool is that meniscus? I'll get you a close up, hold on. How cool is that? <laughs> Anyway, time for jar number one. Now I wish I'd really set something up to truly sort of estimate the speed of a still dripping in here, but um, this is gonna be about as close as it's gonna get, I think. Now normally when I run my still, I collect in uh, 500 mil jars, which is what this is, but to get a little bit more resolution on this and to get closer to uh, the volume of the parrot, which I think might be smart, I'm gonna aim for 250 mils. Woo, and that's... 250 mils. Now I do want to keep this going pretty quickly because what I don't want to happen is for the liquid to keep mixing uh, in here when there's not fluid flowing through it because I don't think that's really fair to the parrot. Obviously this process is going to take a little while so I'll be back soon okay guys. So, this is one, two, three, four, five jars. That is five times the volume of the parrot. And as you can see, that is still coming out blue. This is exactly the reason why I wasn't excited to use a parrot. And why I never really went out of my way to get one straight away. Because you've got to admit, that is not ideal. But I think a little bit of perspective here is in order. First of all, we're collecting into jars anyway. So for the process of 250 mils, we're smearing 100%. Now to be sure, that means that there's no smearing due to the jars between jars, but let's just admit that there is smearing going on within the jars. Cool. Second, if you're using a pot still or anything other than insanely high ABV reflux, you're smearing all over the place anyway. And third, anywhere in the still where liquid will pull is going to create smearing as well. Alright guys, I just wanted to jump in here real quickly and say that the poll is live on Patreon uh, so you guys can vote and decide which rum I should make next. The uh, different recipes are up there and you guys can decide which one I should make. I'm going to go with whatever you guys say. <laughs> so does that mean we shouldn't worry about smearing at all? I guess that's up to you and how uh, accurate you want to be. That's totally up to you. I am not going to tell you at the end of this video whether you should or shouldn't use a parrot, but there is something I think you should see that may help you make up your mind. A little perspective. Let's go over this way. I have worked with food coloring before and I know that a teeny little bit of it goes a really, really long way. Essentially what each of these jars are, 50% are of the jar before them, plus 50% water. So each jar has half as much food coloring in it as the jar before it. Do you get what I mean? But what I wanted to do is create a little bit of a spectrum that will translate color into a certain percentage of that original liquid we had in the parrot. So what I've done guys is line the cuts jars up with uh, where I see them on this spectrum. And I know it may look a little bit different for you on camera. I haven't really sort of seen how it looks. So I guess you just have to trust me in terms of what it looks like in person. But what this is telling me is that that jar number one is looks like it's sort of around about 80%. To be honest, it's a little bit hard to tell because these two jars look so freaking similar. And that goes from 100% down to 50% in one go. But anyway, that is jar number one. No surprises there. What is surprising is how far down this second jar has jumped to. By my eye and this test that is sitting somewhere between 12 and 6% of this jar is the original solution, which means that there's somewhere sort of between uh, 15 to 30 mils 
of the original solution in this jar. That's kind of crazy to me. I really thought there would be more than that. Going down to the next one, jar number three, somewhere between four and eight mils in this jar, which makes up sort of three to five percent of uh, this 250 mil jar. Number four is somewhere, somewhere between two to four mils of the original solution, accounting for about one and a half percent of the total jar. And the last jar is way off the bottom, uh, which I'm guessing has less than one mil of the original solution in it. And that is less than 0.4% of that jar. Seeing as we're talking about parrots and smearing, I feel like I'm kind of uh, honor bound to mention <laughs> the dump valve for a parrot. And I'll show you what that means. Basically what it lets you do is drop all of the fluid out of a parrot uh, when you want by installing a valve down here that you can turn on and off. So imagine that you've just taken off all of your heads and now you're ready for your hearts. You can open that valve out and drop all of the fluid out of the parrot. In my case, that'll be uh, about 200 mils. Uh, and then close the valve up again and keep running, knowing that you're not smearing any of the stuff that was uh, post heads into your hearts or the rest of the run. I have to say that this one surprises me. I really thought that was going to be darker. But at the same time, I'm surprised that there's still that much in it he heading down this way. So what should you do with this information? I guess that's up to you. I think this is one of those things that is very uh, personal. You can't tell someone how to do it because it depends on what's important to them, uh, why they're doing the hobby in the first place, and what they enjoy in the hobby, what they want to drink, so on and so forth. But I think it's probably worth doing a little bit of a recap now that we know this. First of all, the Parrot is a great tool for telling you what the ABV of a liquid coming off your still is at any one time. Second of all, that information can be helpful to you on your run, depending on what you're running, how you run, and the way you operate your still, and do your cuts later on. Next, a parrot causes smearing. Smearing is bad, we don't like smearing, but perhaps it's not as bad as you thought it was. Perhaps it's worse. I don't know what you thought. <laughs> Personally, I don't use ABV for much during the run. I collect all of the cuts jars into 500ml jars from start to finish, all the way from four shots through heads, hearts, tails. So for me, running a pot still at least, I don't think knowing the ABV at any one point in time really helps me. Is it going to be interesting? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Stripping runs, however, I like to run hard, fast, all into one container, and in that situation, I do like to know what the ABV is at most points of time during the run. I just want to take this time to say another huge thank you to Lazy Plumber for putting this together for me, dude. It is absolutely freaking awesome that I've got one, and I love that I've been able to play with this. This is the sort of stuff I envisaged myself doing when I started the channel. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thanks Lazy Plumber for allowing me to do so. I'm definitely going to play with this thing uh, when I'm running the still as well. Before I sign off, I'm going to say another huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. You are making this sort of stuff more and more possible for me to do, which is absolutely awesome. So from me and all the other people that are benefiting from these videos, a huge thank you to you guys. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, give it the thumbs up. If you really like it and you're not subscribed yet, make sure to do so down below. And I'll catch you guys next week. See ya.